Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming out this evening, coming to the Wild West End. <laughs> Always a pleasure. <laughs> I'm from the East End of London. Like most East End kids, I messed up my education because they left the gate open. And uh, <laughs> I left school with a bottle opener <laughs> that I'd made in the third year. <laughs> Two biggest departments in our school were the woodwork department and the metalwork department. <laughs> so I made the metal bit in the metalwork department. <laughs> and I took it across to the woodwork department. I went into departmental. <laughs> and I said to the teacher, Sir, do you mind if I put a wooden handle on this? He said, you are a fucking natural, son. <laughs> He said, I think things are going to work out for you. <laughs> Could I sum up my school in one sort of fairly succinct way by pointing out what happened when the careers officer came. He came to our school and he asked us what we'd like to do with our lives. The most ambitious kid in the class was Gary Utton because he wanted to drive a van. <laughs> we erupted. We're like, you fucking dreamer, Utton! <laughs> Gonna drive a van. <laughs> you would have to write to Jimmy Savile for that stuff, man. <laughs> Only Jimmy can fix that stuff. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> no kid from this school has ever <laughs> got on to drive a van. <laughs> this school is here to produce the people who carry the stuff to the van. <laughs> So I leave school with a bottle opener. Well, that was our school as well. What sums up? We made uh, ashtrays in the second year. We made bottle openers in the third year, and we made prams in the fourth year. <laughs> ah, you got to sort yourself out for the future, ain't you? Eh? <laughs> I left school. I did a little bit of travelling. I went to Spain, Mallorca. <laughs> and Menorca. <laughs> Spain was a bit shit when we turned up, wasn't it? It was all tapas and sangria. We knocked that out of them a bit, blindly. <laughs> we introduced the Spanish to a bit of culture. Set breakfast, bingo. <laughs> bit of cabaret in the evening. <laughs> I know this is not very much anymore, just to keep going to Spain, but I like Spain. I know where everything is. Uh, I've got friends who are not happy with their lives at all. I've got loads of friends, and my friend turned to me uh, about two years ago, and he said, uh, things haven't worked out at Argos. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, doesn't look like I'm going to make area manager, and uh, <laughs> I've decided to throw the towel, and I've had enough. I'm going to go backpacking. So he disappears off around the world for a year backpacking. Comes back, gives me a call. Wants to meet me in Weatherspoons <laughs> on a curry Thursday. Because <laughs> he wants to eat and drink for a fiver now. And, uh, he's not a holiday boy. He's travelled, so he has important information to impart. <laughs> so he's got me trapped in Weathers. Very serious man now. He's all beads, bangles, and Buddhism. <laughs> He's like, I know who I am now. And I'm like, well, you're unemployed, but we won't look into that at the moment. <laughs> he said, oh, man, I have had the time of my life. I have been through fundamental changes. <laughs> he said, I first went to Thailand. He said, Thailand's a fascinating place. It's fascinating. He said to me, do you know in Thailand, it's considered rude to point at people with your feet? <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, thanks for telling me that. There's <laughs> no doubt I shall be straight off the plane. Oi, you. <laughs> 
it's you in the robes over there. <laughs> he said, oh, I see. Still hiding behind the pain with laughter. <laughs> He's got very serious on me. He said, let me tell you. He said, oh, my God. He said, I went to India next. <gasps> He said, the poverty, the poverty was unbelievable. He said, in India, I met people who had no hope and no future. <laughs> and I'm like, well, we could have come straight to the Weatherspoons, really, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. You like hanging about with people who have given up. Monday lunchtime weather spoons. <laughs> he said, I can't believe you're actually joking about this. He said, I can't. <laughs> so he got really serious on me now. These people are not happy unless they're really getting to you. So he said, no. He said, you don't understand what horrors I saw in India. I saw a leper boy who'd been gaffer taped to a skateboard. <laughs> Arms fallen off. <laughs> propelling himself along the road with a drumstick between his teeth. <laughs> he said, now, are you going to tell me that's funny? <laughs> I said, it's a little bit funny. <laughs> Oh my God, he said, you're typical of the people I've met since my return and the finding. You're an example of why I can never be happy in the UK again, because of people like you. You have no understanding of what's going on in the world, no empathy or compassion for others. He said, let me tell you something you may not know and I know. These people who have nothing, in a strange way, they're happier than we are. I lost it at that point. <laughs> I've had enough of this. I said, well, the thing is, they've never had to end an NTL subscription, have they? <laughs> so you talk about my year for a little while. <laughs> so I'm into my 40s now. I, I messed up my education. I do a bit of traveling. I do various dead end jobs, but mostly I spent most of the 80s. The 80s was the decade when I was an international lover player. <laughs> uh, a lover of women. I'd made love with women as far afield as Cardiff. <laughs> Cornwall. I got a girl to wank me off on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> and that was a day trip. And, uh, <laughs> This is the level of expertise you're dealing with. <laughs> the younger fellas don't realise how easy they've got it. This was back in the day when you had to try hard. You really had to treat her like... You had the odd result. I mean, I'd occasionally go out. I might meet an older woman who might want to sort of, like, sort me out. That was always a bit terrifying. <laughs> you know, lost in Chingford with a 30-year-old woman. <laughs> These women used to take me home. This one said to me one night, she said, Oi, fuck face. <laughs> quality, she was quality. She, <laughs> she took me back to her habitat home. She looked at me across the room, she said, Oi, you, I like it a bit rough. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, how rough? <laughs> What's me marker, love? <laughs> but I jumped in. I was keen back then, 17 years of age. I thought, I'll sort of that. This is what I found out if you meet a woman who likes it a bit rough, when you're taking her from behind, a little pull on the hair, that's erotic. They like that. However... <laughs> a short, sharp punch... <laughs> ..to the kidneys... <laughs> ..that's assault, apparently. All I'm saying to the younger fellas is be careful. <laughs> Take it up in stages. If she says, I like it a bit rough, <laughs> don't go and put your kung fu pyjamas on. 
threatening me, love. I'll give you a fucking round out. <laughs>